Today I'm going to use PDF invoices to build a power pivot table in Excel. Before we start importing any PDF into Excel, we have to understand the structure of the PDF. If you look at this page, it seems we have a table section, some row items and columns, but we are not sure what the structure is exactly. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean by the structure. So let's get started. I open up a blank Excel file and as I always, I go to the data tab, I hit get data from file and not from PDF, but from folder because I want to import multiple PDF invoices to my data. Then I can browse for the folder where I have my invoices saved. For sure, it looks empty because this is just a folder selection. I hit open and the navigator pane is just connected to my folder. I can see the attributes and everything related to my folder. From there, I simply hit transform data. And now I can see exactly that what files, what type of files are saved in the folder. If I would have something different, what I don't want to import, I can simply just select the extension column and filter out the extension types I don't want to include in my folder. This time I will need only two columns, the content and the name column. I select those, I right click and I hit remove other columns. And I'm going to name my query table as data source PDF. This is the raw data source I'm going to use in my tables. The content column includes the binary information. That's basically the PDF file or the data what Excel was able to pull from the PDF. As you see, if I select one of the cells, then it will show me that what's the actual binary data inside that file. And I don't want to transform this query table because I will need to make multiple transformations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on the original table and I'm going to hit reference and I'm going to name this table as invoice number. My PDF files are named properly but I want to pull the actual invoice number included in the file so I'm going to use one table to get those records. And now we are going to learn a new M function which is called PDF tables. I enter the name of the function and from there I have to enter the name of the column where I have the binary data and that's the content column. I select, I close the brackets, it seems there is no error with my M code, I hit OK and voila! This magical function is able to extract the data from the PDF files. So if I select one of the cell or row under the PDF column, you can see that this function found tables and pages in that binary data. And that's what we want since we want to pull the information from those tables. So let's expand this column. I'm not going to use the prefix as always. And let's see what we have in those four columns. I hit OK. It expanded the actual content. And as you see, it was able to identify the type of the content we have, how it's named in the PDF structure and what kind of objects we have saved in those PDF files. And as we see, we got pages and tables. For sure, the tables are inserted on the pages. And in order to simplify our life, we are going to select from the kind column the table type. And now let's see what we got in those tables. So I'm going to select one of the cells and I see I got invoice date, number, customer ID, etc. That's the table one. Let's see what we got in the table two. Table two includes the actual item list from the invoice. But in this table, I want to see the invoice number. I want to collect those records. And as we see, if I go back to the table one, my invoice number is included in the table one table. So I'm going to select from here the table one. And I think we can modify our query a little bit. It seems we don't have to use the name that one column. I'm not going to apply a new step. I just simply go back in my apply steps list and I select expand PDF. I hit the gear icon. And and I say I don't need the name column, so I don't want to see that in my query table. I go back to the last step and here we go, it disappeared. Now I select the data cell one more time to see what I got there, that's fine. So now we can pull the actual records and data from those tables. But before we would expand those tables and we would get the data, we can remove the unnecessary columns. I'm going to select the content, the ID and the kind. I hit right click and remove column. Here we go. I left the name columns right next to my table because I will need to join somehow the records and data 
since the data is stored in different PDFs, right? And now I just simply hit the double arrow and I can expand the content. Whatever is stored there, I want to see all of them. So I just simply hit OK. And here we go. I got the name of the files and what records are stored in there. And that's where the structure comes into play. Now we can see that the first, the first record is the invoice number tag, then the actual invoice number, customer ID, etc. And there is a sequence and logic how it's recording and stored in the PDF so we can easily transform the data then. And it seems we are lucky because the invoice date is also stored on the same table. So that actually means that this query table, not just the number, but the date as well. So I'm going to just rename it. And let's see what we need from here. The customer ID is not necessary because that's my company's customer ID, what I do, obviously. And I do not need the term either. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select the column one and from there I'm going to remove the customer ID. Here we go. But it's not perfect yet because what we need is the actual invoice number and the date. Let's see what left. Still the customer ID and the term comment is there. It's the same data everywhere. So what I can do again, I go back to the filter, I remove the customer ID. I hit OK and now only the data left what I need. But I don't need a header of that record so I can remove these records as well, these row items from the tables. So I'm going to select the filter one more time but obviously you can do it at the same time when you transform your data. I just want to demonstrate how you can transform and find the structure of your table. And here we go, I got the invoice ID related to the file name and the date. And as a last step on this table, I'm going to name my columns and saying invoice number, invoice date, and I can format them properly. I select the column, let's say this is going to be text and this is going to be date and it's done. Let's find the actual items we sold on those tables. I'm going to select my data source again, hit reference and uh, I'm going to name it as sold items. And I just simply repeat the process what I did on the previous table. I'm going to say PDF content. And the cool M function we learned today is the PDF tables. I open the brackets. I enter the name of the column where I have the binary content, close the brackets, hit enter. I expand the table, I'm going to select the ID kind and data, this time hit OK. I'm going to select the table 2 because that's where I have the item list stored in the PDF. And again, I'm going to remove the columns what I don't need anymore. Right click, hit remove other columns, awesome. And now I can start expanding the actual tables from the PDF. I want to pull all the columns. Let's see what the structure is. There is an end line at the tables, which is always the same on the invoice. So I can start with removing the unnecessary items. For sure, we do not need the nulls and blanks. So if there is no item assigned on the invoice, then why would I need that? Then I'm going to remove this comment. Thank you for your business. I hit OK. OK, it seems we are getting closer. But as you see, there is a glitch in the PDFs. For whatever reason, the last column generated a second column to display the record. So basically, we got invoices pulling the amount value in column four, but in another invoice, the amount value is displayed in a different column. But it's easy to fix with M. So let's transform the data a little bit more. And I'm going to say custom column. I'm going to name it as amount. And we are going to make a very easy if statement in M. So I'm going to say if column four equal null, which is nothing empty blank in M, then I want to get back the column five as a result else i want to use the column four no errors i hit ok here we go i got the amount value merged together properly and now i can remove the column four and five i don't need them anymore let's double check one of the invoices so we got item quantity unit price and amount so four column let's go back to the query editor and as you see one two three four the fifth column is the name what we put from the binary data so i'm going to now properly format my columns the item should be text the quantity should be a whole number, the unit price should be currency, 
and my amount is going to be currency as well. And now let's name these fields properly. Item name, quantity sold, unit price, and the amount. And now we got to the point where we have to decide which method we use since there are multiple methods to build that pivot table from now. And I'm going to show you one which can be done easily in the same environment in the Power Query Editor. So what I do now, I go back to my data source and I'm going to create a new reference query table. And this is going to be my invoice pivot table not the actual pivot table but my source and what i do now i remove the content column i do not need it anymore and i'm going to merge my data according to the file names right because we left the file name on each query table because that helps us to differentiate the records on the table so what i simply do i go back to this table i go to the home tab and i'm going to say merge queries and I'm going to merge with the invoice number and date first. My unique ID is the name, name again, hit OK. Now I can merge with the second table, which is the actual item list, sold items, unique key, name, name. And now let's expand the tables. I don't need the file name anymore because that already exists on my table. Expand the sold items. I don't need the name, hit OK. And voila! all the data merged together on the same query table without building any data model or linking the tables and from here our job is very easy i go back to the home tab i hit close and load close and load too don't forget because we don't want to load all the tables back to the user interface of the excel i simply hit only create connection it opens up the query pane and the only thing i need is the data i built for my pivot and that's the invoice pivot table and at this point again we got two options we can decide whether we want to load our data into a simple pivot which is under the insert tab on the excel graphical interface or i want to build a power pivot which is more advanced and i'm going to show you both techniques so if i want to build just a simple standard pivot table then i'm going to use this master invoice pivot table right click load to select table it can be the existing worksheet or a new one let's say the existing a1 hit ok and my table has been loaded to the excel graphical interface and from here i just simply select the table and i hit pivot table on a new worksheet and from here i guess it's very familiar for everybody let's see the second option with power pivot so the second option is to load to a data model but we don't have to build any relationship just to use the power pivot function and that's what i recommend so right click load to only create connection add this to the data model i hit ok then i go back to the data tab hit manage data model and here we go our table has been loaded to the data model and we can use the power pivot feature then if you want you can use dax to add additional calculation but we are not going to do any calculation this time i just simply select pivot table pivot table existing worksheet a1 that's fine i hit ok i expand my data source and here we go i can start building my pivot table using pdf data sources let's say filter is going to be the file name invoice number can go to the rows and let's say invoice date is going to be a column and item name is going to be on the rows again quantity sold unit price amount that depends on what type of table i want to build let's say i want to see the total value what was sold for my company i move it under the values field and from here i can make it more fancy i go back to the design tab i do not need the subtotals i don't recommend them to use I turn off the grand totals and the report layout I prefer is the tabular one. I go back to the view tab, remove grid lines and from here I can start analyzing my data. If you don't like this layout you can still format as you wish. I can go back to the design tab, hit report layout and repeat all item labels. If you want to see the actual value of the invoices then I can pull back the subtotals at the bottom. Then I just right click on the invoice number field, I select expand collapse. Then I'm going to select collapse entire field, I hit enter. And here we go, I can see the total value of those invoices by date. 